Hey everybody, Bill in Virginia. Welcome back. So this is Jerry's Build Part 5 and it picks up really a couple of hours uh, at the end of the last video. So I came in and uh, I think I mentioned I was having a little bit of electrical issues here. If the switch was thrown, uh, it would kill everything else. All I did was a simple jumper from uh, these leads over to this issue went away. I could flip this switch all day long and same with that switch and it would not kill anything over there. So it's just a matter of making sure that I've got power uh, feed going in here just the way this thing is probably internally isolated. Uh, coming off here, thrown a different way, you know, just kills other segments. So not a big issue. Didn't think it would be. So tomorrow Jerry is going to be coming over and we will be running his stuff on his layout. And uh, I think Jerry will let me do some video in of him having some fun on his railroad. So more to come. Sunday morning on a dreary fall day here in Richmond and uh, came out real quick and I added a second set of feeders. So put in just a temporary feeder going on this side that eliminated any of the electrical issues and concerns that I had. I've got steady power no matter how I throw the switches. I'm not getting anything that's uh, disconnecting. So I am a happy camper. Running the engine opposite direction of what I did yesterday just to make sure that I'm not having any glitches going through switches in the other direction. So, looking pretty good, and Jerry is going to be over this afternoon, so I will ask him if uh, he would approve being on video, and we'll uh, see him running his Jeep on his layout. So, more to come. All right, Sunday afternoon, and uh, notice we've got a different engine running. Jerry brought his Jeep over. And Jerry is running his railroad. So Jerry, what do you think? I'm having a great time doing it. This is a dream come true. I appreciate being able to participate and help you make your dream come true. The uh, building of this layout is fun. It's straightforward. You've done a fantastic job on your track plan. You know what you want. Uh, this is a good layout for running as well as for switching. So while Jerry's here, we've looked at the uh, different aspects of the layout, made a little modification to uh, the spur that's over there, kind of tightened it up so that uh, it leaves more room for a station at that location, more room for some scenery, a scenic divide. Uh, and uh, it's been running really well. The uh, train that you see there has been running for a good 15, 20 minutes already. I've had some of my equipment on earlier today in some of the earlier segments of the video. This is going to be a very bulletproof layout. Once we get it done, Jerry's already planning and building buildings. So that's going to be something that we'll be looking at here in future videos. But Jerry likes to run the train slow, and his engine can go really slow. And that's not bad off of just two feeders, a DC locomotive, and a very old Tech 2 power pack. Can't complain about that. You can sit, you can sip coffee, and just watch the train run. Well, Sunday evening is coming to a close. Had a nice visit with Jerry this afternoon, and I'm back to running my uh, loud engine. <laughs> uh, I pulled all of the pins that was holding the track in place, and I adjusted down there. You can see I've got space now on the side of the table. This space is closed up a little bit. I'm running the trains to make sure that uh, no issues going through all of the different uh, passing sightings. Right now, everything is running really good. No derailments, minimal hesitation. Trains are just clicking along, which is how they're supposed to be. So I'm gonna do a little bit more testing and then uh, call it good for the evening. And uh, 
wait for Jerry to send me back some information on exactly where he wants the blocks. He does want some blocking to put in this. So that will be easy enough to do. But uh, I can start to uh, get a felt tip marker out and start tracing the track so I can get ready for putting down the cork road bed. Uh, that will be coming up here fairly soon. Probably get started on that in this video. So just a short segment here on uh, some things that I bought this week. Work had me going to the Kansas City area. And as I always try to do, I try to uh, find a model train store, hobby shop, you know, it's kind of close to where I'm at. I always uh, go in and if at all possible, I try to buy some things and I try to help out local brick and mortar shops. So in uh, Kansas City, this is from Fred's Train Stop. Uh, actually, it's down in Olathe. So some O-scale boxcars, three of them Pennsylvania, different road types, and then a B&O boxcar. Uh, really nice, everything's there. Good price on them uh, from some gentleman's collection. They had a little bit more Pennsylvania stock in there for two rail, and if I had more space, I probably would have bought it, but I filled up my uh, carry-on suitcase pretty quickly with these four cars. Also stopped at another hobby shop and uh, didn't have a whole lot of room, but did find this. Titchy Train Group, uh, you know, assortment of windows and doors, as well as some N-scale wheel sets. Got a bunch of N-scale cars that I can change out the, uh, the wheel sets uh, with a little bit lower, lower flange so that it's not quite so cookie cutter. Uh, this one was from a uh, hobby shop called Show Me Model Railroad Company. And that was in Grandview, Missouri. So again, just uh, I think that was east of the Olathe area. Nice, nice hobby shops. Both of them actually fairly big. If you're ever down there, Fred's Train Shop, a lot of stuff in there, all different scales. Just show me. Same thing, a lot of different stuff in there, a lot of scales, uh, good assortment of materials. So I'll put these away and then get back to uh, starting to mark off the uh, track locations on Fred's layout. Well, Saturday afternoon, back out here, starting to do a little bit more work on uh, Jerry's build. So I did come in earlier today, and even though it's kind of hard to see, I've traced out the outline of all of the tracks. So when I take the track off, I'll uh, have a good representation of where it goes. Then I'm gonna come back in with a red marker and do a rough dotted line down the center so that I can use that to align the cork. That'll come a little later. Also, you'll see uh, blue painter's tape in a few scattered locations on the layout. I uh, got information back from Jerry around electrical blocks. So the tape represents where uh, different electrical blocks are going to go in on the layout. I think that will work. It'll isolate, uh, make it where he can run uh, different trains, can have a couple of trains on the tracks or more engines in different areas, and then uh, choose what he wants to run. So where I'm at now is I'm going to come back in and on some of the sections that are a little bit longer, I'm going to solder the uh, rail joiners. Not everything, but uh, on some of this where it makes sense, I'll uh, solder them up. Uh, that way I can take them off the layout. I will label them uh, with more painter's tape and have pictures so I know exactly where everything goes back. And uh, just to give me some good electrical connectivity. Uh, then I will also be able to come in under some of those and add feeders to the soldered rail joints. So a little bit of odds and ends of stuff yet to do on this, but I'm uh, making progress. I will uh, get myself set up to do the soldering here in just a little bit and uh, go from there. So more to come. So I'm gonna show a little bit here on just how I solder and make my own feeders. So I've taken a piece of end scale track, uh, the code that is the same as what uh, I'm using for here. Bend it into an L shape. Basically, this will allow it to sit and stay reasonably stable. Then I've got a little connector 
and I'm just going to slide it on to the long end, or you could do the short end, doesn't make any difference here. And you just need to get it on enough so that it's on. Next, I, uh, I can't get to my diamond files because they are buried <laughs> right now, so I'm using a sanding block just to slightly rough up the backside of that rail joiner. Doesn't need to be much, just to kind of get the surface done. Next, I've got uh, a feeder wire. I've already pre-tined the end of it. I did that when I was doing a bunch of them. Now what I'm gonna do uh, for me is I'm just gonna take a little bit of my flux, just dip it onto the, uh, the wire. I'm gonna run just a little bit on the back side of that rail joiner, just so that I've got a little bit there. While we've been doing this, I've got my soldering gun already heated up. So I'll bring that around, put just a little bit of solder on the uh, tip. If I can see it here. There we go. Got it. Now I'll tie the back of the rail joiner. You can hear a little sizzle. So it's good. Now what I will do is a little bit more solder. Just bring over my feeder line and just put it in place on top. Hear the sizzle, let it sit for a few seconds to get uh, firm. All right, see it's on there pretty good. Put the uh, soldering gun back over here. Now, while it's still on the jig, I'll come in and I will nip off that little excess piece that's on the side, just so that it's flush. I can take it off. And uh, rather than paying $250 for uh, two pair of these, I've just made one. And it's solid. It's not going anywhere. So I've already done like one piece of track. So I have not soldered the joiners to the rail yet. I will do that here shortly. But you'll see how I've got my lines in here. So my black is on this side, red is on this side, they cross under this. When I put them in place, there'll be a hole drilled through the road bed, and then these will come down like that, and the same with the black one over here, and they'll just disappear into the road bed and ballast will cover them up later. So that's kind of how I'm gonna do it. I will take then uh, the next piece of track that goes on it, put it together, and I will do one rail joiner at a time. I'll clip on my uh, heat sink to each side so I'm not melding my ties, and go from there. I will make sure that the feeders are the same direction as what I want, so that red is on one side, black is on the other, and I'll make sure of that before I actually do my final connection. But just a short little snippet of how I'm gonna do all of these on this layout. I will have, I don't know, nine, 10, maybe 11 feeders in different areas just to make sure that I've got good electrical conductivity through all of the track and go from there. So here's how I'm gonna do the uh, different joiners and most of them will not have the feeders attached, but I will put on my heat sinks just on the opposite side of each joiner and if I've got a feeder, I'll move the feeder a little bit out of the way so I'm not taking a chance of melting the, uh, you know, the protective plastic. I'll heat up my soldering gun. I'm only gonna apply solder to one side here once I get it hot and uh, just enough to kind of get into that rail joiner and uh, then we'll go to the other side. Should be short and sweet. And the first complete section is now soldered. Rail joiners are soldered on this. I've got my feeders. So one piece down, a lot more to go. <laughs> so I'll be busy doing this for a while here. But uh, yeah, it's going quick. First, very first joint that I did here, not such a pretty job, but paint will hide that little bit. Second set already much better. Uh, you know, the rest of them should go pretty well and have pretty smooth and nearly invisible joints where I've soldered up the uh, rail joiner to the track. So let me get started and see what else I can get done. But uh, I got to check and see how long this video is. This might be about where I kind of cut it for this one.
So this video is long enough. See, I'm already pushing 15 minutes, so I, I think that's going to wrap it up on this one. Tomorrow it is supposed to be a rainy day in uh, Richmond, and I think I will be out here in the afternoon doing more wiring. And I'm sure I'm still going to continue yet this evening here. But with that, keep having fun on your layouts. Until next time.